Hey, what is going on guys? We have YouTube here back with another video. And I was just looking at the official Yu-Gi-Oh card website and they have information about mermails. I'm sure everyone knows this already. But uh, the rarities have been announced for the mermail monsters as well as one mermail that is a TCG exclusive which for the first time in a long time is actually a decent TCG exclusive. So we have mermail this Linda. It's probably going to be a staple in the mermail Atlantean hybrid decks and it is going to be ultra rare from the looks of things. Uh, Mermail Abyss Gund isn't really used except in Mermail decks and she's going to be rare. Mermail Abyss Hilda, understandably, is going to be common because she's, of course, far more situational. Um, Abyss Hilda is going to be rare and Abyss Pike is going to be rare. I like the fact that Abyss Pike is going to be rare. I hope it's not going to be like secret rare or something crazy like that because he is pretty much a staple at two in most Mermail Atlantean hybrids. Excuse me. Sorry, just a dinner. Um, Mermaid Abyss Megalo is of course going to be secret rare, I guarantee you, because everyone's going to be looking for this card. I'm going to need two of him when uh, they eventually come out in a couple of weeks' time. But the new card, forget about that piece of crap, uh, Abyss Sphere is going to be ultra rare. The card that I am paying attention to is this guy, Abyss Mander. He's really, really good. We're going to take a look at him now. Um, I can see so many, you know, bitching combos for this guy. So... He's level 4, 100 attack, 2000 defense, so he's basically a 2000 defense wall, which isn't that bad. Then you can banish this card from your graveyard to activate one of these effects. Increase the level of all mermail monsters you currently control by 1, or increase the level of all mermail monsters you currently control by 2. Uh, so if you think about that for a second, you could you could have basically um, an abyss, two abyss megalos on the field, and they do suggest this. Um, because you can go into Dyson Sphere, if that is the case. You get two Abyss Megalos on the field, you banish this guy from your graveyard, instant... Like, this guy could basically make an instant uh, rank 7, rank 8, or rank 9 XYZ, uh, depending on what you do with him, basically. Uh, similarly, if you have two level 4 monsters face up on the field, uh, you can banish them to go from rank 5 or her rank 6, uh, two level 3 monsters, a rank 4 or rank 5. Um, and so on. So he's really, really versatile. Getting him into the graveyard isn't going to be an issue because you're just going to have to. You're just going to normal summon uh, Abyss Pike or Abyss Hilda, or uh, ditch him for uh, to special summon Megalo Abyss. Uh, you'll plus off it in some in some way anyway because you get a search. And if you, the other monster you discarded was like an Atlantean Dragoons, you'll get a search off that. So you get two searches. You ditch this guy. You banish him from the graveyard. You use Dragoons to search up uh, another Megalo Abyss Megalo. Um, if you have other monsters in your hand, you can discard them, especially some of the second Abyss Megalo, banish Abyss Manor from your graveyard, uh, pump them up to, pump uh, the Abyss Megalos up to 8 or 9, and overlay and basically go nuts. Um, Dyson Sphere is, of course, an amazing card, and uh, I very much look forward to testing it out. But what about the other TCG exclusives? Well, we're going to take a look at them now. Some of the names just look really, really weird, uh, but we're going to start. Red Dragon Ninja hasn't been revealed yet, so we don't know. Apparently, there's another Abyss card... Uh, page does not exist. Yes, that really helps me a lot. Nor does this card. But uh, apart uh, for the rest of them, they've all been pretty much printed. Giant Soldier of Steel looks very interesting. It's basically an anti-burn card. So it requires two level three rock type monsters to special summon um, or XYZ summon, which is kind of situational. I mean, you can only really use him in rock based decks. And nevertheless, he is really, really effective against burn decks. So he's unaffected by other monsters' effects. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, he's not affected by other uh, he's, he's affected by other card effects, so he's affected by spells and trap cards. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one XYZ material from this card. It gains 1,000 defense until the end phase, and if it does, you take no effect damage from your opponent's card effects this turn. So that's that's basically what it is right there, the ultimate burn anti-burn card. And if you notice, he has the same stats as Giant Soldier of Stone from Legend of Blue Eyes back in the day, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, moving on, we have another Spellbook card, Spellbook Library of the Heliosphere. Uh, if you have three or more spellbook spell cards in your graveyard, reveal the top two cards of your deck, add any revealed spellbook spell cards to your hand, and shuffle any remaining cards into the deck. And you can only activate one of them per turn. You cannot activate any spell cards the turn you activate this card, except spellbook spell cards. That is similar to Spellbook Library of the Crescent, uh, the same condition of activation. Um, it's not too bad, actually. It's kind of like a pot of duality for spellbooks. Um... That's all you can really say about it. Uh, spell, although the deck isn't played too heavily anyway, so 
There's this, and the second one is Spellbook Star Hall. Each time a Spellbook spell card is activated, you place a spell counter on it, and basically, you, when it's destroyed, you can add a spell caster from your deck to your hand, whose level equals less than or uh, less than or equal to the number of spell counters on the card when it's destroyed. Basically, not too shabby. And they're finally releasing Bahamut Shark. You'll see down at the bottom here. For those who don't know who Bahamut Shark is, he's the ultimate rank four monster for the Mermail. And Atlantean decks, where if you overlay a, an Abyss Pike, say, and an Atlantean Dragoons, Detached Dragoons, Special Summon the Vyth and Dragon from the extra deck, and then, of course, you get a search with Dragoons. Yeah, I mean, this, it's lots kind of plussing off it. Plus, he's 2600, which means he can make Utopia, force Utopia to negate, uh, which is kind of nice. And, um, yeah, really, really happy this guy's coming out. Probably going to be an ultra rare. Same thing goes for Thunder Seahorse. I saw a lot of people ring the, the Ma Hunter, Pa Hunter, and so on. And this guy, you ditch him and you search for two of them. Uh, I think 1600 less attack with the same name, I think. Uh, other interesting things, Fishborg Launcher. I can definitely see this guy getting some play. I initially ran him in my early build of Atlanteans. So during your main phase, if the only monsters in your graveyard are water monsters, which they will be if you're running this deck, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. If this card is special summon this way, banish it, uh, banish it when it leaves the field. It cannot be used as a synchro material monster except for the synchro summon of a water monster. So you're basically going to use him for Gungnir or for Kishinladun. Uh, do Lauren on occasion as well. The effect of Fishboard for long share can only be activated once per turn. Um, if you manage to get him back with Levier and get him into the graveyard again, you know, you could basically do some really broken plays with this guy. Uh, he's just simple, a level one tuner. You know, how much more simple can you get? He kind of reminds me of Fishboard Blaster in kind of his simplicity. But he's really, really good, and I can fully expect this guy to be ran, maybe at one in some of these decks, just to give them a little bit of synchro options. They have the three Deep Sea Divas, but the problem is if Deep Sea Diva gets Vaylord, it's more than likely going to die in the next turn. Whereas, at least if you ditch Fishborg Launcher, Special Summon Megalo Abyss or whatever, it's live in the graveyard, and you'll be able to Special Summon it. So, uh, I don't even know what this is, Electromagnetic Bagworm. <laughs> wow, it looks very, very old. Target one phase of Machine Down Monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase. If this card is destroyed by battle, the monster that destroyed it loses 500 attack and defense. That's kind of interesting, except really, really dated. <laughs> uh, so we're going to take a look at some of the other cards. Eight Magician. I remember this guy being semi-decent, so he's Dark Beast. That's a bit weird, level 3. Cannot be special summoned. Once per turn, if this card is in face of attack position, you can send one monster from your hand to the graveyard to target one face of defense position monster your opponent controls and take control of it, but it cannot change its battle position. So it's a little situational. He has to be in face of attack. You need to ditch a monster, and the monster you're you're taking has to be in face of defense. So not the most amazing uh, exclusive. But the reason I made this video was basically to point out the fact that um, sorry, this guy. <laughs> when a field <laughs> face of field spell cards on the field, he gains one thousand attack. <laughs> Lols. And he's a plant. Weird. <laughs> anyway, yeah. The reason I made the video was basically because of Bismander and his potential. Um, really, really happy that they released an exclusive that is semi-decent. And I'm hoping that the other TCG exclusive that they release will be equally as good. And we can look forward to some happy days involving mermails. Uh, earlier in the week I went through another, like, the other set of mermails that are coming in the next set. And combined with these guys, uh, they're going to be, I think, a tier 1 contender. Um, I'm not going to say for sure, but uh, they look pretty damn amazing right now. And uh, I kind of underhyped the uh, 1500 attack and defense guy who, when he kills a monster in battle, he special summon a mermaid in defense. Um, on the video, I said, oh, he's too weak, he's not going to be able to attack over anything. But in fairness, you're gonna, you might have gachis on the field, you might have those equip spells that negate traps and effects, the uh, whatever, the abyss scales, and so on. And so they'll boost his attack points. And that's not really, so attack points aren't really an issue. So I take that back. Mermails are going to be amazing. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave the video there. It's really late where I am, so uh, I just want to get some food and like, go to sleep, basically. Uh, so I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. As always, I am Weevil, you YouTuber, and I am signing out. Peace, guys.